Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing Dungeon Universalis and it's looking grim in this adventure uh, probably I don't know, I'm, I'm in the middle of a fight here fighting a group of bandits we managed to kill their dog <laughs> that is the only success I had until now um, these two uh, guys with a sword I managed to break his shield and he is in a pretty bad shape but this guy uh, is still doing well um, it's actually the other way around this guy has three wounds and he is he only has a single wound now the problem is that we basically lost this initiative role here which brought us in a very bad position they were all alert they immediately attacked us while we entered the door and she ended up in a very very weak position badly hit by these two guys with the um with the crossbow and yeah she barely survived she is down to one life point but we can take a healing potion and that's what I'm gonna do so uh, but first we start the new turn and the dark player starts again and by the way I forgot so first of all I forgot uh, achievement points because I basically thought okay this adventure is over in general and it might be but uh, still I, I want to try to at least for now track this stuff more or less correctly so I forgot to um, to track all the achievement points because whenever you do a spell successfully you get an achievement point uh, up to five spells so you can get overall five achievement points by simply spell um, um, yeah doing these spells successfully and uh, this guy nah, I think that was so he received all the achievement points for the turns that we were fighting and I forgot something and that yeah exactly that was the fortune I've spent with her I think three fortune and for every fortune spent he also gets an achievement point so right now he should be I think at 11 I'm not totally sure about that but I think that might be the case. So it's not looking good that we can beat him. And actually it's also not looking good that we can even accomplish our goal here. But for now, for now we got to continue the fight. And the guy again starts. He had the initiative. So all the turns, all the combat turns start with him. So that means we got to, this goes down. The duration of the spells and no power card for him so that means now again he goes into the activation these two guys have to reload and they will move back three spaces now I wonder that would mean this guy would move here so I'm not sure if that is still line of sight, oh boy, that is hard to to estimate. It could be. It 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 seems like it might. I think it is. I think this is actually the center of this space is still in line of sight of the center of this space. He can shoot over the table because the table is lower than he is. So I guess it's okay, one, two, three. So he goes back here, and we assume that this is line of sight. And this guy moves also one, two, three spaces back. Simply because the behavior card says at the beginning of its activation, if it cannot shoot at a target or must reload, and that is the case, it will be activated last. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't matter. And relocating. And then it says here, relocate, move up to three squares away from a priority target. Okay. So, and then in the next turn, 
they will be able to shoot. And now these guys attack again. So we start with him. And so again, he kind of attacks here across the corner, which is a minus one modifier for him. And I got a plus one modifier because of the war dance spell. So again, I've got the white dice, the black dice are for the enemy. And oh, I got a, well, actually I don't have a plus one modifier because of this axe. So I have no modifier at all. He's got a minus one, I guess, for the broadsword. Yeah, okay. And he's got a, an ability of three. I've got an ability of five. So overall four on my side. Ah, wait a minute. No, 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 exactly. Minus one, plus one because of the spell. So I got five and he's got overall a two. Up. Oh boy, that sucks. I'm, I'm gonna reroll this, I guess. Okay, so we got a 5-5, five, five, and this guy had a 5 overall, so that's it for him. No, it was the other way around. He's got a 5-5, five, five, and I have a 5. Okay, so he won that. Um, that's not good. So first of all, it means... Uh, let's see. He's a dirty fighter. So a dirty fighter means that if he's got doubles, which he had... Uh, let's see. While attacking uh, melee, he will automatically stun an opponent. Okay. So I got a stun marker, which basically means I got a minus one to all my to to a lot of important abilities, things like shooting, uh, I think intelligence. Um, fighting, maybe movement. I mean, not armor, for example, That's in, but most of my abilities go down by one as long as I'm stunned. But I can try a recovery um, at the beginning of my turn. Now, let's see, maybe there is something. Yeah, that one here, a tough. That will help me, I guess. Yeah, a character gets a plus one whenever he rolls to avoid the condition stunned, diseased and poisoned, and also plus one to recovery rolls. So great, so that, that will help me here. Um, and then we gotta check for the, for the hits, of course. So he does, I think, four damage with his broadsword. I got an armor uh, value of Three. No, that's not true. Five, actually. Okay, so let's, let's see. Oh boy, that was bad. You know what? I'm gonna use a fortune again because otherwise I'd probably be dead. So that gives him another one. Okay, that is much better. No hit here. So no problems for me. Okay, great. That wasn't too good. Now the other guy will attack. And now I'm stunned. So I got a minus one modifier and so does he. Okay, and again he wins the attack roll. So he will roll. Oh boy. And you know what? Again, I have to spend a fortune, and this is really going south here. Okay. Okay, so that was much better. No damage done here. Okay, so that was the action of this guy. And now it's me. And now the first thing during a, a turn is actually the recovery phase. 
and it only applies when you have some weird conditions. And now this is the case. Oh, by the way, wait a minute. I forgot something. Technically, these guys, they could have pushed me back when they hit me. I forgot that. So let me, let me check that. So here's the problem. When he ha did a successful hit roll, he would have pushed me back and then taken my place. So that means um, the second hit roll was not possible. It's a little weird. I'm not even sure if I want to do that because technically that gives this guy the disadvantage. And I don't think that makes a lot of sense to be honest, but it's hard to tell. Let's see if we find Uh, push. After attacking and winning a combat, will always push enemies and follow. Okay, I mean, that is pretty clear. So that's the thing. We have to do that. And that means, yeah, I'm not gonna... I shouldn't spend that second fortune here that I did spend for the second attack uh, because this guy pushed me back. Now, usually he would have pushed me back into her, but that's not possible. So he pushes me back somewhere else. I don't know where. I'm going to say here and he will follow. Okay. So that's what the rules say. That's so clever from him. I don't know because now the other guy is not able to attack me anymore. Right. I'm not in range. Now, can you move through here? I think it's not possible if you're engaged. From what I understand, you cannot move um, through uh, through an ally. Usually you can, but it costs you an additional movement point. So this is now pretty bad because also these guys are now blocked. So, yeah, I don't know. That's. Uh, I mean, it makes sense from a... It's kind of realistic if you think about it, right? You have these two are engaged in combat and he they're fighting with a sword and he pushes him back and then he, he follows. That makes a lot of sense theme-wise, I guess. Um, but it's, it's a pretty bad idea for him because now he's much more vulnerable. Okay, so now it's me and... Um, So let me see. First, I got to check if I can recover from this stunt condition. Uh, usually on a four to six, I can. Um, but um, because I'm tough, I can add one to this roll. So yeah, I'm definitely will. So I'm no longer stunned. So that was the recovery phase. And now I can start and do an attack against this guy. Uh, so let's see. Okay, now that was good. That is a critical. And... Okay, now... He can try to block now the attack with his shield. But because I have a critical... Uh, I can subtract one for our, yeah, I think it's going to be harder for him. So instead of blocking at five and six, he can only block the attack at six now. And he can't. So now I can, uh, I can roll for damage and this time it's looking good. I probably will be able to kill him. So uh, let's see. I got... My strength is four, so I can roll five damage dice, and I did a critical, so it's an additional die. Yeah. Okay, now that is, these are two damage, and he already has three wounds, so that means he's dead now. And uh, there we go. That gives me an achievement point. And now I have the option to, to follow him. I, I, could, I could take his position here because I killed him. Now, I'm not sure if I want to do that. Uh, I might be able to kill him too. 
So I think I want to do that. I want to try that. So let me see. Hmm. Oh, by the way, let me check if I'm still in line of sight of these two guys because they can shoot in the next turn. So I might try to get away from the door here. Now let's see, um, this guy, oh boy, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he can shoot through the door. He can still see me. So I guess I'm gonna move away. After the attack, which was my action, I'm gonna move back here now. And this guy, hmm, that's a little tricky. I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's a oh boy, we're gonna need some kind of ruler here or something. So anyway, I think what I'm gonna do now is I think with her I think she's in a really bad position. Hmm. Okay, now she will, and that will be only a quick action, she will drink the healing potion. And that covers up to four points, but of course the potion goes away. So she still has one fortune, and now she is no longer wounded. But yeah, that discards the potion, and yeah, that makes me feel a little better now. And in addition, I'm going to exchange my weapon, grab the crossbow again. And finally, it's her. And I'm actually considering moving back two spaces. I'm not in a pretty good shape here. I don't want any trouble with this guy. And yeah. Okay, I might consider giving him, and I think that is also a quick action, I want to give him the healing potion. Okay, I can do that because I'm adjacent to him. <clears throat> and that is then the end of my turn. And now it's, again, these guys. So this goes up again, he rolls a die, okay that's not good, that's a, that is a power card for him, oh fuck it, that's very bad, that's reinforcements. Okay great, use this card during one of the dark player's combat turns in any type of section. Place creatures worth up to 6 points in a section already explored without creatures and adjacent to one character from the group of heroes. What? I find that a little odd. Okay, wait a minute, it says So it can be done in any type of section and it can be placed adjacent to the character or as the say is what is that that's weird to one character or is that about the section so that the section has to be adjacent to a section where a character is both sides must roll initiative, even if they have no line of sight to each other. Okay, I guess that means they're not adjacent to each other. Because, so I think, I think they're talking about a section that has to be adjacent 
to a section where one of the characters is in. So I guess the guys come from this room here that was here before. Otherwise, if they would be adjacent, if they would, I mean, it makes no sense that they immediately show up next to a character and um, then it also would make no sense that they have no line of sight. If the Dark Player loses, the new creatures will not be activated until their next turn. If the Dark Player wins, the creatures will be activated immediately. The rule caught by surprise won't be applied after the initiative roll. Okay, that's that's a tough one. So that means, um, first of all, he's got to spend 6 points to play this card. So he's now down to 12 points. And then we got to check this thing here and we go again onto this table here and roll a die and we see who will show up. So again we gotta draw we gotta add this time we gotta add plus one because it's not the, about the large section here. Oh boy that's a seven. So we're gonna meet Two elf bandits, three human bandits with axe and shield. Oh god. Oh my god. That's that's really bad. That's really bad. Okay, so now it's a it's a new morning for me. Cup of coffee over here. And I just set up these reinforcements here. And um, so I realized I made a mistake when I activated these two permanent spells at the same time. That is not possible. So uh, when you activate a second permanent spell, the uh, effects of the other uh, of the first spell immediately disappear. So kind of cheated here a little bit. I guess that that means that the arrows what arrows spell is no longer working for me and I only have the wardens left. <clears throat> okay. So let's see what's going on. These guys arrived, so now we have to do an initiative roll. She is closest to them, so I think she's the one who has to do it, which is good for me because she has, she is my scout. And um, the elf, they have a perception of one. And yeah, so we got these two guys, by the way, with the bow. They are back here. They are behind the wall. And here <clears throat> we have the three guys with an axe and a shield and um, they are placed in a way as if the um, as if I just opened the door if, if I just explored the section here so okay so sadly I cannot close the door it would be cool to close the door um, and then they, I think they have to break it. It's not that easy for them to get in then. But that won't be possible because that was a door that I actually broke. I might consider actually closing this door. Hmm, that could be an option. Maybe I should do that. I, I have to check exactly how that works, but that could be helpful for me. So but first, I gotta do an initiative roll now between the scout and one of the elves. So I got a plus two mo I got a plus three modifier because of the owl and uh, the elves have a plus one modifier. So I guess it's pretty important that we win this roll. And okay that's a tie. Hmm so what does that mean? Um, Gotta check that. I, I have no idea what a tie here means. And no, that's not a tie. The elves 
because of their plus one, they win. However, I could re-roll that, and I will. I mean, this is very important for me, I guess. So, I'm gonna re-roll. Is it really that important, though? Hard to tell. Hmm. I don't know if I really have a big advantage. I mean, these guys will come in. Uh, you know, I think I'm not going to reroll. It's my last fortune. I think for now I'm going to save that. And yeah, I'm going to let them all activate instead. Probably. Okay, so let's 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 get this going here. I mean, at the start now, we have these two guys activating, and do they? Well, actually, that's yeah. First, the ranged fighters will activate. So let's see. And we got to roll the die. No, we did already. So the ranged fighters will activate. I think this guy definitely has line of sight on the owl. Maybe also on the dwarf. This is, uh, this is hard to see, actually. Hmm. This guy has line of sight to the dwarf. So he's going to shoot. And he's going to need a 10 to be successful because of the distance. He's got a, he's got a minus 3 uh, modifier here. Yeah, so that means he needs a 10 to hit. And he doesn't have that. So that was a miss. And the other guy, I don't know. Does he have maybe line of sight? He might have line of sight to her, I guess. I'm pretty sure he does. So, um, but what about him? It's hard to figure that out. I kind of use this thing here and that can help a little bit. I'm pretty sure. No, 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 he's got clear line of sight here. So, he also needs a 10 to hit her. Um, maybe even more because he might have a better agility. Um, she's got an agility of four and this guy only has an agility of three. So therefore he needs even an 11 I guess. Which he does not have. Okay, cool. So these were two mistakes, um, yeah, two, two failures here. That was helpful. And now we start with um, these two guys will be activated later because they cannot hit. And if you you are a ranged guy and you cannot, uh, you have no target, you're going to activate at the end. So that means now that the other three will be activated. Okay, now he's going to start the attack and I think... Um, that he's going to go for the dwarf because usually he would attack the guy who is easiest to... No, actually, wait a minute. That is not true. He's going to go for someone who wasn't attacked yet. So these two already were attacked. So therefore, he tries to go for the one who is easiest to hit who wasn't attacked yet. Now, the owl is a little harder attack. Uh, to attack because it has a minus one modifier because it's flying. Now, one, two, three, four, five. He cannot reach her, our sorceress, so he will actually go for the owl. And I guess he's moving. Well, that's a little tricky. Probably here then, because 
He doesn't probably won't doesn't want to block the way in here, I guess. So he's gonna move here probably. And that means that he's gonna fight the owl now. So he's got a minus one modifier when attacking the owl because it's flying. And uh, okay, so that is good. The owl wins. I guess. Wait a minute. Yeah, the the owl has a three, and so does this guy. So the owl is fine. And then we start activating these guys with the X. So okay, there is still some kind of preference to attack the sorceress because it wasn't attacked this turn yet, but it's out of reach, obviously. So that means they're gonna go for the one who is easiest to hit. And uh Then we're going to try to distribute the attacks as evenly as possible. So therefore, I guess we're going to see an attack on her, our witch huntress. So she moves in here, or he moves in one, two. And the problem is we cannot do a defensive shot here because he already is too close. That's uh, that's a real issue. I should have yeah, I couldn't know that. So then Wait a minute. He was here 1 2 3 4. So he moves in here. And we see an attack. Now she's got a minus 1 modifier because he has the crossbow, which is not a melee weapon. So that's not good. Oh, and she blunders. Oh boy, that's that's really bad. She blunders. Um, now, what does that mean? Um, she will lose a weapon, I guess. The funny thing is she might be still not losing the attack, but let's see. Um, so this guy has a three combat value and she has a four combat value. Minus one, so uh, that's also a three, so no, she... But the X also does give him a minus one, doesn't it? Yeah, the X also gives him a minus one, so therefore, um, it's a tie. So it's kind of funny, because there's a tie that means the guy, uh, the character with the high agility wins, uh, which is me. I got a four after the modification with the leather armor, and this guy only has a three. Now I gotta see, I think the blunder still applies. So therefore, I will actually lose my weapon, which is obviously uh, a disaster for me. And I mean, things are just going terrible in this, in this scenario. But I think that's, that's what might happen. Or maybe the blunder doesn't apply if you win the fight, but I think that is not the case here. Okay, so indeed I dropped my weapon. And now I gotta check if, if it breaks. And there's a good chance it does. On a one to three, the crossbow will break. So let's hope this is not the case. And, okay, this time we were lucky the crossbow is still intact. But it's now pretty much lying between his legs here. That's right underneath him. That's not good. But we got a chance to pick it up as a quick action, so we might consider doing that. Um, okay, so that was his activation, and now the second guy comes in. Oh boy, is that busy here. Oh. So I guess, again, they're going to try to distribute attacks evenly between the targets. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he cannot reach the dwarf. So I guess he's going to go then also for the owl. So one, two, three, four. 
So that brings him here, and he's attacking the owl. Okay, the owl wins. That was a close call, but the owl wins. And now, I guess, again, the sorcerer will be the target. One, two, three, four. Well, he cannot reach her anymore. That that's So that means he can only move up to here, and that's it. He cannot move any further. And now, these guys will activate... I guess they basically move here. And they will run, I, I assume, so we got to roll for if they stumble. Well, the first guy doesn't, so he can simply move here. One, two, three. Oh, he's going to move around, like one, two, three, four, five, six. And he also has to run, obviously, and... Oh, look at that, he stumbles. Now that's pretty cool. So that means he can actually only move half his movement allowance, which is, he can only move three spaces. So that's kind of cool. That might give us one more turn. One, two, three. Awesome. That was pretty good. That was the end of the activation of these guys. And, well, I think we are still okay here. Um, so now... I really got to come up with a plan and so what I would like to do is I would play the the God crush them spell on this guy because that would affect also these two and this guy but I need line of sight to do that and these guys block line of sight so let's see where I could move I could of course go Try to get here. One, two, three, four, five. Do I have line of sight here? Hard to tell. Maybe I will. It depends if she will actually block it or not. She might do it. But she could go out of the way. And nah, but she's she's engaged in combat. It's not that easy. Yeah, I think she actually blocks line of sight there. It, it, there is a little bit. It, the the line kind of cuts the edge of this of this space here. So she has to uh, she has to disengage. It seems. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, now, so if she could disengage and then move, for example, in this space here, then if I move here, which is my maximum movement allowance, I, could, I would have line of sight on this guy and then I could cast that spell. So I guess that is what I want to do. Um, it's a little tricky though, but, uh, well, yeah, we have to disengage, so that means we got to do the agility test successfully. I'm going to need a 6 to do so. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's give it a try. And I managed to do that. That was pretty important. So we can move back here now. And now she's got the, way, she's got the option to move 1, 2, because of the obstacles, she cannot move diagonally. Three, four, five. Okay, now she's standing here. And this gives her now line of sight to this guy. And that means that she can now cast that spell, the God Crush Them. And that is super important. If she manages to do that well, uh, we might get a big advantage. We could. We could harm all these four guys pretty badly, uh, but we need luck. Uh, there's no doubt here. This is the last mana we have left, so we'll see. Um, we could definitely use a couple of fortune here. We, we need to, to, to give it all now, right? I mean, there is no holding back anymore here. 
So, and by the way, we are now in the, oh, look at that. Was that, would that have made a difference? We had a role earlier on where it seemed to me that there was just a difference of one or so, but I think, I think that wasn't that important. So, um, yeah, let's see, we need a five to, to cast the spell. So, sorry for that sound, let's see. Oh boy, you don't believe that. But we got the experienced wizard, so we can re-roll that die. Okay, that's a six. Well, at least that's something. It's not a great roll, but it's okay. Um, so, yeah, we, we successfully managed to, to cast a spell on on this guy and that means now first of all we got to check if it backfires so not a one please okay that's a six that's pretty good and now um, so what's gonna happen is that the guys who have a shield which is basically all of them they're gonna use their shield to 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 um, reduce the damage so we can only roll three dice against them and well it doesn't really matter I start with this guy here okay that was pretty good so um, let's see he's got a yeah he's got oh no it's natural armor so he actually takes three hits that is good so he only has one left and we got a roll if the shield breaks, and that will be the case, I guess, on a one or two, if I'm not mistaken here. Let's see. Yeah, on a one or two, the shield will break. Okay, that is not the case. So then we roll for the next guy, also three dice. Okay, these were at least two hits, so it wasn't terrible. Very really a shame that they couldn't use the shield here. And again, we have to roll. So also here the shield didn't break. Now the last guy here, or not, not the last one, but the last one here in the room at least. Okay, that was good again. So again, three hits for this guy. And again, we roll if the shield breaks. And again, he was lucky. And now the last guy, and he doesn't have a shield, so he takes four damage dice. Okay, I mean, theoretically, it's the natural armor. So theoretically, we could re-roll that, but I think three out of four is not so bad. So I'm going to give him also three damage points. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my fortune uh, my wow I got a lot of fortune, but you can reroll only once, so therefore I guess that's okay. I guess we did actually pretty well. I mean, three of these guys are down to one life point, <coughs> and so these are all pretty badly wounded, except for him and of course this guy back there. So that wasn't so bad. Okay, now. Um, Huh, we might even let the owl attack. You know, I think I'm gonna go with that. But first, the, the dwarf will attack this guy here, and he has no more shield. That, that shield of his was broken. So, let's see. The dwarf got a plus one modifier because of the war dance. So he manages to win, and he does a critical. So at least this is looking good here. So we have now, let's see. Yeah, I got seven dice. My strength is five. The X does a five plus one. And uh, I shouldn't have that modifier, by the way, but it doesn't matter. And so we got seven dice overall because of the critical. Oh, well, it wasn't great, but it was that was enough because he is already no actually holy crap that wasn't enough oh fuck it you don't believe that this is just 
he only is he only has one wound so you know what i'm actually i'm actually gonna use a fortune i don't care anymore here so i'm gonna roll that again okay this time i managed to kill him so that was good there we go this guy is dead and I can advance now do I want to do that I think I want to yeah why not I'm gonna advance here now it's the owl and the owl is gonna attack this guy here um, now what are the odds that we do some damage here super low but the funny thing is if we we might actually do it he, she can do a maximum damage of one <laughs> that's not great but you know if we're lucky uh it's gonna be enough so go go owl so we have a we're actually not that bad i mean seriously <laughs> there is a real chance that we can kill that fucker with the owl so let's see Ah, that's not good enough, I guess. She's got a 7. This guy has a 9. I guess I got a plus 1 modifier. Makes it an 8. But he still has a 9, so... Yeah. That's a shame. That would have been really cool. Here's actually a rule that says a character must stop flying when he wants to attack an enemy on the ground. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think I'm, I'm definitely going to ignore this rule. This is just bullshit. It's a bird. I mean, come on. What the heck? I mean, why should I? Don't, don't tell me that I have better odds in hitting this guy when I'm standing on the ground. This is just ridiculous. So, therefore, um, I'm going to ignore this rule. At, definitely with a bird, I I'm, I'm, might... I mean, that's, that's the whole point, isn't it? So, yeah. Okay, uh, let's, let's see. So, um, I'm ready. I'm done. And now it's the dark player again. So, let's, let's continue this. So, he rolls again his die. Okay. And now, we see again first activations of the of the ranged fighters and they gotta reload so they are ready they can they can shoot next time I'm, I think I might want a marker for that so I'm, I'm simply gonna use that so now they I know that they can shoot next now if that marker is in there they have to do it let's let's say like this okay so um, yeah, so they are ready now next 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 turn to shoot. And well again it says they're gonna move away from the target, which I find odd, but I think they will then. So they're gonna move back here, up to three spaces away, and this guy moves then I guess here. Because that's what the rules say. They 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 move if they if they have to reload they're gonna do so and in addition they will relocate which brings them up to three spaces away so yeah now they are at the very back okay now what about these guys um, oh, now okay these guys cannot attack so for now they will not activate because again when ranged fighters cannot attack, they will activate less. And by the way, these two would have also activated less, but here it doesn't make a difference. So that means now uh, that these guys will actually all activate. Okay, now let's see. I mean, oh boy, these guys, it seems, are engaged, these two here. They are engaged with the dwarf, uh, yeah, so they are both engaged with the dwarf because the dwarf is standing adjacent to them. So they're going to have to fight the dwarf. So let's start this. This guy, 
I mean, they could also fight the owl. It doesn't really matter. So um, let's start with him. And he's going to attack the dwarf because the owl is harder to hit. So let's do that. Um, okay, so that was definitely good for the dwarf. <clears throat> and this guy, I guess, he will attack the owl because you got to distribute the attacks evenly and he has the option to do it. So he's going to attack the owl now. And again, very similar as before, he's again trying to get the owl and he's really doing fine, but the owl is doing better. Because it's flying, gets the, the so the other guy gets a minus one penalty here. And um, so now it's, uh, wait a minute, we gotta be a little careful here. This thing is actually lying here. Okay. So now it's this guy here and he's going to go now here because it's basically the only one left you can reach. I got to be a little careful with all these wound markers here. So he moves here and yeah, he's going to attack her. And uh, yeah, great. I, I forgot to draw the dagger, which was really stupid. Should have done that, obviously. Well, actually, the crossbow is no longer in my hand. So there you go. That was a stupid idea. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to get attacked and I'm unarmed. So I got a minus one modifier. Okay, that wasn't good. So let's see what that means. I guess I lose. So I got to use my, could use my fortune or I could simply take the hit. But, you know, I think I'm actually going to use my last fortune to reroll that. On the other hand, hmm, I don't know. So I think I'm actually going to take that hit. So uh, he's got an axe, which gives him four damage dice. not great but I want to save my last fortune so oh boy that's not good at all so yeah I'm gonna spend that now <laughs> and if I now roll poorly I'm dead and that was that was terrible so she is indeed dead um, yeah, yeah, she's dead. She's knocked out. Yep, okay. So let's see what that means. I'm not sure. It's, uh, it sucks. That's for sure. It really sucks. So she took four wounds. So she's knocked out. Let me, let me, I think right now nothing basically happens we just have one less character she cannot fight anymore because she has no i mean she can still use the staff obviously but she has no more spells so uh, this is not looking good at all oh my yeah i mean i roll just Terrible. Um, so now it's going to be these guys, and now he can move and he can shoot the wizard. And I think now we might actually all die. Uh, we have basically one, two, three. So he moves here, and now he shoots at the wizard. Okay, that is a five. I think that's actually not enough. Let's see. Yeah, that is not enough. So we were lucky here. And now at the very end, it's this guy back there. He activates and he runs now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Now where does he run? 
I have no idea. I mean, probably in here. Nine. Ten, I guess he ends up here. Okay, that is all pretty much a total disaster. Now the dwarf will continue fighting here. There's nothing else he can do. So he attacks now this guy here with the axe. And that could be enough. He's got a combat value of four. And that guy only, yeah, that's definitely enough. Now that guy has a shield, so he can roll to block the damage. On a five or six, he'll be successful. And he isn't. So now I can do some damage here. And uh, I think I do six dice. No, five dice of damage. Okay, now these are two hits, and that is enough. So that means we managed to kill this guy, which makes it a little easier. And now the owl attacks. Uh, I'm not sure if she still does. I mean, she might be so shocked that her master is killed. So we'll see. Actually, um, the animal is still there, so we can assign the animal now to another hero. So we're going to add to the end of the quest at least. I'm not totally sure what happens then. So the, that means the dwarf now takes the owl. And now the owl attacks. And I mean, there is a chance, right? The, we're going to attack the... I guess we're going to attack the, the elf here. Or maybe we should attack... Yeah, the guy with a lower attack value. I think that makes more sense. So we're going to go for the for the uh, we're going to go for this uh, fighter here. On the other hand, he's got a shield. Uh, you know, I'm going to go against the elf, and that is a hit, and it's a critical hit. That is incredible. So I get two dice. I get two dice. That is awesome. So I got a real chance to actually kill the elf. But I'm going to need a four. But it's possible. It totally is. Yeah, there you go. The owl killed the elf. Well, that was the first really good thing in this adventure. Awesome. So, some revenge here. And now it's her... And I guess she simply attacks with her staff this guy here. It's hard, but you know, also she needs only a single point of damage to kill him. So she can try at least. So let's see, maybe we're lucky again. We have a couple of fortune points, so at least we can try this. Now, okay, that ain't too good. That's a, just a six, and this guy has a nine. So, um, I'm going to spend a fortune point. I don't know. I mean, it's... I got a ton of them. Yeah, why not? Who cares? So, I'm going to do it. Uh, maybe I roll... I let him re-roll, and we'll see. Yeah, he's got a four. I mean, at that point, we can we can really burn through these fortune points. We just have to survive the next turns and then we make a run for it. So we managed to, to do some damage here. And now we can try to, uh, to, yeah, we will see. I mean, it gives him a plus one on, um, on armor because the staff is so bad. But we're using him with, uh, with, with two hands. I just see that. Yeah, we, we, uh, that's something we could have done. So we get one more damage, and that means we get exactly three damage dice. We need one success, and that is definitely good enough. So she managed to kill this guy. 
Awesome. However, he can use his shield. So let's see, on a five or six, we were lucky again. So now it's looking good, but okay, I mean, they were all heavily wounded. Okay, that, that was okay. So it, it's looking clearly better now. Okay, so now it's again the other guys. Okay, no power card. And they're gonna shoot again. So they're gonna shoot for the dwarf. Nobody else is within reach. So uh, let's see, they're gonna need a high value, something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they're gonna definitely need, well, it's a minus three. I guess they're gonna need a ten here. Okay, that was a miss. Oh boy, that was bad. That was a hit, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a fortune and let them re-roll. Okay, that was also a miss. Fine. So now um, we're gonna see an attack from him. Now he is engaged with me. He's gonna turn around and attack the dwarf. And that was, I guess, not a success because I have a little bit better fighting value. So, no, we both have a seven, but in the end, also because of that spell, we should be, I don't know, it's, I guess it's done by now. So, um, yeah, but still, um, that was good enough. And now it's the shooter here and uh, yeah that's a little tricky now she can shoot the he can shoot the 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 the, uh, the sorcerer so let's see i mean that's seven that's not looking good that is a hit i guess um so it's it's an elf so she's got a, a four I'm a little more agile. I wonder if I should force her to re-roll. I think I will. Okay, that is a miss. Pretty good. So, now it's me again. And I'm going to obviously activate... You know, I think I actually want to activate the owl first because she has a real chance to kill this guy and then the dwarf could attack the shooter. So let's start with the owl. And again, that looks pretty good. Uh, she's got an eight. The guy only has a six. So yeah, that is a hit. So he could use his shield to defend himself. And he didn't. So hey, maybe the owl can do it. So, uh, but she only has, this time she only has a single die, because there was no critical. So that means <coughs> we need a good roll here. Ah, uh, we didn't. Bad luck. And now I actually want to attack with my staff this guy. Uh, yeah, I want to try that. So I'm going to move closer and I attack him. So, let's see. Uh, so he's got an 8, I got a 7. That's going to be close. Mm, let's see. Okay, he's got one less combat value. So that means it's even. And I have a higher agility, so I win, which is cool. And he can roll to block the damage. And he did that. So, hmm. I wonder if I won't allow that. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's spend a fortune. You know, as I said, it doesn't matter at that point anymore. Um, so that, let's just do it. Okay, he didn't. So now we do some damage and we do uh, three dice of damage and we just need a single hit. 
And yeah, that was good. So we killed him. Awesome. Okay. And now the dwarf can move. And he's going to move here. And I want to actually... I think he is even behind him. So I can now attack from behind, which gives me a plus one bonus. Now, in addition, this guy is unarmed because he only has a long range weapon. So I got another bonus. So I got a plus two bonus now. That's not bad at all. Okay, so I got a nine. He also does. I win, obviously. I got a critical. So, hey, maybe I can actually kill him. So, that gives me, I guess, seven dice. And his armor is four. Uh, gotta be a little lucky. We need four hits. And that is it. Awesome. So, we managed to kill them. Uh, okay. So, technically, that was pretty good, except that she died. That was a shame, but... In general, that, that battle went pretty well, and, and she was really unlucky. I mean, you know, she had twice very bad damage rolls, so... Okay, but uh, such is life. Now, there are only these two guys left, so here's the thing. I actually want to kill them because, because I want to search the bodies, you know, and then we're going to leave this adventure, but I definitely want to, want to get something out of this fight. We killed a ton of people. And you can only search the bodies when the combat is over. So as long as these two fuckers are still alive, we can't do it. But, um, yeah, at least I want some, some loot uh, from this. And it's probably not going to be so bad. Okay, so now these two guys, they can reload. And... I mean, it is tricky. It's, it's, it's tricky to go there and try to attack them, but I think I want to try it. So they can reload. Yeah, they shot last turn, right? Okay, so they should have had this. And now they re reload. It, yeah, they reloaded last turn. Exactly. Did they? I'm not even sure about that. No, you know what? I think they didn't. So, they got to reload now. Exactly. They got to reload now. And... So, they can shoot again next turn. So, now it's me. Now, I wonder if you can do a defensive shot if you reload it. I think you can. I think technically now the weapons are ready. So if I run for them, um, they can do a defensive shot. That's tricky. That's uh, Yeah, that's quite a problem. So I think here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide. So I'm going to move with this guy here. And we're also going to move the owl a little bit out of the way. We don't want to risk too much here. And I'm going to move with her one, two, three spaces. I'm going to go with her here. And yeah, I think that's, that's my plan. And now these guys, yeah, now it's going to be a little tricky for them because I'm not totally sure what they're actually going to do. I think at that point, well, it says if cannot shoot at a target, it will be activated late relocating. So that means they basically only move three squares. Okay, so let's 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 let them do that. So it's one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. And so I I'm gonna pass on that. Basically, I'm gonna just let them come. So it's another one, two, three. One, two, three. 
Okay, um, <clears throat> so now it's a little tricky. Now I could start running, but then at that point when I'm standing here, one of them will do a defensive shot. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I could engage them both. Um, and I think I'm gonna go for that shot. I just have to be a little lucky. I got one fortune left. So I think I'm gonna go with that. So it's one, two. I'm running out of the door. And now let's say this guy, because, yeah, let's say I'm attacking him. He can do a defensive shot. Only the one who is actually under attack. So he will shoot now, but he's got a minus two modifier. So that means he needs a nine to hit me. Which he has. Ah, okay, great. So I'm gonna spend my fortune and I'm hoping that. Oh. oh, shit. So that's a four, that's not good. Okay, that's a five. So he didn't hit me. Continue moving. And now I can do an attack. So now he's unarmed because, well, I mean, he's got the wrong weapon. And. So just in case it matters, this guy has an unloaded weapon. So uh, we'll see. I mean, I think he can actually move back and shoot at me. That's a little, that's tricky, but okay. So we're going to do the attack. And yeah, that's, that's a success for me. So that allows me now to do... A damage roll with six dice. Okay, that looks very promising. So he's got an armor of three. So yeah, we killed actually this guy. Pretty awesome. So that means that now he is engaged with me. So he cannot simply run away. Uh, he's got to try to disengage here, but uh, I can also use her and move toward him and you know I actually I think I'm gonna take that risk so I'm gonna move one two three four spaces and I have a higher agility than him and I think so at least yeah that's the case and he does also defensive shot but he needs something like a 10 now I guess which he doesn't have. So now I can attack him and so let's see. Okay, that was great. That was even a blunder with him. Uh, but during a blunder, the AI doesn't lose his weapon, but he's got to check if the weapon breaks. Uh, if the weapon breaks, I mean, obviously then he loses his weapon. So let's see. And it doesn't break, but it was still a blunder. So now we got uh, three damage dice against him. Okay, that wasn't great. Uh, that was just one damage, but still. Okay. <sighs> He's in a pretty bad position. Uh, if engaged at the beginning of its activation, it will always try to disengage. Um, so he's going to try it. The problem is, uh, he's going to try to disengage from both of us. So he's going to start. Uh, he only has an agility of three, so he needs a seven to successfully disengage. Uh, that was a mistake. Well, actually, you know, it doesn't really help him because he cannot shoot. He already shot his... So I don't even know if he wants to try because he cannot shoot. But he might reload. Okay, so yeah. So And then the second one. So he didn't manage to do the first one. So uh, technically we don't even try the second one then. So he's got a fight in melee and he's going to go for... Uh, 
So he's going to attack the dwarf because the dwarf did more damage last turn than the wizard. No, actually he's going to attack the wizard because the wizard is easier to hit. He's got a lower, a lower combat rating. Yeah, yeah, that is actually the case. So, might be successful here. So he's got a 9, but he's got a minus 1 modifier because he's unarmed. So that means he only has an... Oh, God. Let's see. I mean, I think it's a tie. He's got a 3 plus 8 is a 10. Okay. I got a 4. Oh, plus 7. That's an 11. So actually, I win. That makes sense? I think it does. Yeah. No, he's got a 9. Yeah, but he's got a minus 1 modifier, so it's technically a 3 plus 8. That's also an 11. <laughs> what? Okay, so it's a tie, and that means the more agile player wins. I got a 4. Uh, this guy has only a 3, so I win. Awesome. No damage here. So now we can attack again. The dwarf does the first attack. And that is probably not good enough, I guess. Um, yeah, that's not good enough. And then she does her attack. And that's also not good enough. Look at that. So now again, this guy tries to disengage. And that was a success, actually. And now... Uh, the next roll... That is a six. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't. He only has a three, so he needed a seven. So he wasn't successful, so he couldn't disengage from both of us. So therefore, he will try to attack again the... Um, Malice, our sorcerer. Oh, that was a blunder. That is painful. Uh, I think it doesn't matter if you are unarmed. Well, I don't, yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know. Is he still carrying his crossbow? I, I lost a little bit here. Didn't he actually lose the crossbow before? Wasn't that something like that? I don't know, man. I think now, when you attack, I mean, he kind of uses the crossbow as a weapon. I don't know. I, I thought, maybe I forgot. But didn't he blunder before? Didn't he already lose his crossbow? Now, let's say he didn't. So that means that right now, uh, he is basically fighting with the crossbow as a weapon, I guess. And he blundered, so we gotta check if the crossbow, it, it definitely drops now. And now he can, he's gotta roll if it's still be okay. And no, it's not. So the crossbow is, is damaged, so he now fights totally with his bare hands. And uh, I had an, I had, uh, I had a success. Did I? No, wait a minute. Oh boy. Yeah, he attacked the wizard, and it was a mistake. It didn't work out. Okay, so now the, the dwarf can, can do his attack. And you know, actually, we should have rolled at least once this die. Okay, probably twice. Okay, <laughs> so we're lucky here. So let's see, now the dwarf attacks, and that looks good. Yeah, now I guess he's probably dead. So we got... Six dice here. Six? Nah, it's five dice. Yeah, I guess it's five dice. That looks good. But he's still alive. No, he only has an armor value of three. Okay, so eventually we managed to kill this guy. And yeah, wow, what a battle. Insane. We were successful here. But... We paid a price. It was incredible. I mean, we lost her. And we'll see what, what that means in the end. 
and of course this this whole level is gone uh, there's no chance we can get to the to the to the boss here we are gonna go for it now but we can search the bodies that's something that means we killed overall um, let me see we there were five creatures in this room and five here so we killed overall five uh, ten creatures which means um, these were all grunt creatures so for every creature we can roll a single die we can roll ten dice and for every six that we roll for every four plus we roll we get a coin and if we roll a couple of sixes we might find objects yeah it wasn't good so one six isn't good enough but we get a lot of coins so one two three four five six seven coins okay that is not too bad at least so yeah okay that's at least something but sadly no special objects or so the chances were pretty good with with 10 dice but we only rolled a single six okay so what are we going to do now? Well, we got to recover her, that's for sure. We got to bring her home. Maybe there's a chance for her somehow to get revived. And so we simply... I want to search this table, I guess. And now that's the thing, right? At that point, we don't have to move through the room anymore. I mean, obviously, the, the time doesn't matter anymore because I'm going to go out anyway. So we just slowly move and move toward the table and then we simply search the table maybe we find something of value here the thing is if you have basically if time doesn't matter anymore uh, we can simply move freely in these rooms and we don't have to physically do it because we just can't imagine that we never leave our safety zone and that we just you know it's we don't have to do it so let's see there is a table and some chairs in the room. Characters searching them must roll 3d6. For each result of 6, they find one pack of provisions. For each result of 5, they find one supreme beer. Okay, so let's do that. Maybe we'll find some food here. Okay, we didn't. So, great. Uh, that means now we basically move out. We recover the crossbow. And... Of course, the owl also comes with us, and I'm going to check what happens to her. Okay, so what happens is basically that we can simply carry her um, home, more or less. And at the end of the quest, which is now... So the quest failed, obviously. At the end of the quest, we're going to roll a die to see what happens with her. And, now if we, and we cannot re-roll that die, so we cannot spend any fortune or something. So if we roll a 1, I think she's dead for good. Uh, if we roll something else, she might only be injured. So we see what we roll. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Oh yeah, that's a 1, great. Okay, death. So the hero is dead. His mates may transport him to a place where there is a healer and resurrect him for the cost indicated, although the hero will suffer permanent and incurably injury. Okay, now, honestly, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. I think I'm simply going to restart with a new hero. I mean, she's pretty much at the start of the game, and so, yeah, maybe we're just going to come on with a, with a new hero here. I think, you know, at that point, she didn't accumulate any... I think she accumulated one experience point, and so therefore... I don't know. I think I'm going to just grab the stuff she has. The owl was cool though, but still. I think I'm going to I'm going to take a new hero instead and just not not going to resurrect her. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh I, you know, at that point if you have some somebody who is terribly injured at the very beginning uh yeah, no. So she's dead, I guess, and was a shame she was yeah. She had a bad time right from the beginning here. She was not made for these adventures, I guess. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to simply uh, read the... I wonder if I should try that whole thing again, but uh, for now, first I'm going to read the... Do I want to read the outcome? You know, I could try that adventure again. Huh. So here's the thing, you can try an adventure twice. You are allowed to do that. So, um, but only twice. If you don't make it twice, you, you failed. So the thing is, I'm, I'm actually considering doing that. I might actually go back. into the city, heal, and then we could go back in again and, and give it another go with a new character. And maybe we're a little more lucky this time. But on the other hand, eh, I don't know. It's a little boring, isn't it? Yeah, you know what? Actually, I think I want to show you a little more of the campaign. So, uh, you know, I think I'm not going to do this adventure again. Instead, we're simply, uh, we're simply reading through the rules here. And we see what happens if you fail the mission. So that's this one here. Mission failed. Read narrative Nexus T4 when you return to Vernac. Okay, so first we're going to make it back to Vernac. And uh, yeah, okay, so we're moving back on our map here now. So here's my problem. Um, I really don't like this rule with all these stupid markers because I'm not, you know, this, I don't know. I mean, I'm not letting this map standing, you know, open somewhere for for the next month or something. This is, this is a, that's just shit. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the campaign rules. I think they are kind of weird. So, especially with the artificial dark player. But okay, let's see what we do now. I mean, what happened is, I think when we moved here, <laughs> oh boy. I don't remember anymore. I think the first marker, I have no clue about that. I gotta read through the rules again of this stupid dark player. Okay, so first, I think these markers will move now one space here. So they should be like this, I guess. There was no new marker generated. I rolled and although I failed the mission, there was no new marker generated. So now, I think I'm, I'm, I'm basically here in this region and I'm gonna travel here, I guess. So I'm gonna draw, I gotta draw one of these cards here. Not sure if I could take the road. I mean, there is a road here, so I probably could also take the road, but it's more likely to get an event there and I wanna avoid that. So I, if I roll a five, it's gonna be an event here. Okay, no, that's good. And now we're in the city of Vernec, so we gotta roll again and on a three, uh, yeah, so we got a travel event here. So that's theft. Yeah, great. Characters find many distractions while in a town and they may come with a heavy cost. Choose one random hero. He must pass an intelligence test. Otherwise, the group loses a fourth of all the coins they carry with them. That's great. Okay, so let's see. It's either the dwarf or the sorceress. Okay, it's the sorceress, so she needs, I don't know, I guess a five or so. Okay, she has that, so we're good. Uh, it can be really painful. Okay, but, but we were good here, so we were, not, we were not robbed. So that means we're now in the city, and we gotta, we gotta read that text, and we're gonna see what happens. Uh, God. You have not achieved your mission and you are ashamed of it before Arthur's, who tears the contract which he had signed for your services. There will be no new chance for you. You have lost all my confidence. I believe you have no future as adventurers and sooner or later you will perish in some ambush or be slaughtered in a dungeon. 
I will have to take care of that rock myself. Get out of my sight. Okay. So during the rest of the campaign, if you visit the governor's quarters in Vernac, you will suffer a minus one to all your rolls. Awesome. As you leave the governor's house, you decide to reflect on your future. You have truly lost all self-confidence. At that moment, you walk through the streets crowded with wagons carrying all sorts of things. You hear an interesting conversation being held between two merchants. They say it might be a troll, though its footsteps seem to be size of a horse. Well, we could steal horses. That, that may be our future. Then it can only be one thing, a giant. No troll has reached that size, not even the beasts that emerge from the caves of Brandmoor or further east. If there really is a creature that size haunting the area, I won't risk going up north. The road to Bibal is now the most dangerous. You approach the merchants and ask for more information. In Barrock, they need some adventurer who dares to go into the Guardian Hills and find the den of that creature, explains a merchant with a leafy beard. If anyone were able to kill it, be would, what he would gain the favor of the Count of the Region and also of all the ranchers and farmers. Okay. So, I guess we're going to go with that. I mean, why not? Um, so... Cool, I think that's lovely. And we're gonna need a new character, obviously. So we're simply gonna draw one new scout for our group who is crazy enough to hunt down a giant. And uh, then I guess we'll see this in the next video or on, um, yeah, okay. So I uh, hope to see you then, bye.